Get to know the name J.R. Giddings and Michael Dandy with great hops. They love him and rock short. Jayhawk land. This is college hoops, my friends. Feel the passion. Feel the electricity. Feel the excitement, the energy. Nothing like a college campus. Hill tries to quiet him down to the best shooter that Michigan State has does just that. Well, he's really a terrific three-point shooter, one of the best in the history of the school. Graves into the game a couple of minutes ago, not starting for Kansas and dealing with a bad right knee, played little minutes in game one. Wayne Simeon, he might have a monster year this year, Dick. Well, you know, Langford and Simeon out of the gate had 45 against a good Chattanooga team coached by Jeff Lebo. They'll go Raleigh inside, and the redshirt freshman Tom Izzo looking for somebody along with Paul Davis to do some things on the interior. Yeah, they're trying to hope they can find a guy like Rob Riley to give him some minutes on the interior because they're going to need some size. Simeon driving on Raleigh. And a block is called. The foul is going to be on Paul Davis. You know, these clubs had a great game, a classic of 1986. It was one of the special games in the NCAA. Judd Heathko, Larry Brown, controversial, <laughs> malfunction of a clock at the end. I mean, it was unbelievable. Went to overtime, yep. Kansas won. A Sweet 16 game yep. back in 1986. That year, by the way, was the one year when Bill Self was a graduate assistant coach at Kansas. He played at Oklahoma State, but then for one year was a grad assistant here at Kansas, then was an assistant at Oklahoma State for a number of years before starting out as a head coach. So yes, it was only one year, it was a long time ago, but this is one of the stops where Self has been before. Well, that's where he developed the affection and love for Kansas basketball, the great tradition that exists here is so special. I mean, that 86 team went on and beat my buddy Jimmy V to go to the Final Four. Four, and that was the year that never nervous purpose zealous in and Louisville won the national title great year Simeon at the line knocking him down and that sends us to our first timeout great start six minutes in great atmosphere in the stands and great intensity on the floor Aaron Miles and the Jayhawks are up five early and we'll go back to Lawrence in just a bit. Final minute now in Maui, folks. A very close game. It's a one-point game, in fact. Dayton, San Diego State. Here's the conclusion with Sean, Bill, and Jay. Jake Walaskowski scores for Dayton to give the Flyers a three-point lead with 45 seconds to go. Chris Walton, a very long three to tie. Walaskowski and Scott there for Dayton, and it's Scott with the rebound. And nobody back. Ben was alone ahead of the pack, but Jones was fouled on a reach-in by Eric Sanders. Now, I'm not saying this should be an intentional foul, but how many times have we heard in the interpretation that if you make a play that is not a basketball play, if you grab somebody, I mean, that was a fast break with an open man ahead. Should sure that not have been intentional? Here's the ball going inside to Wallace Kowski. And you're thinking about the left hand. You're yeah, absolutely he to, right. He Go wants to go to his left every time. you got to sit on that right shoulder. But how about... The threes coming down the stretch. Some bad judgment really has hurt the Aztecs. Wallace with 12 points and 10 rebounds. So he's had two straight double doubles in this EA Sports Maui Invitational. Well, they talked about the difficulty. Uh, the backcourt struggled a little bit, Jay. Just not getting what they had going the other night. You got to find another way to help your team. Well, 50 points between Brandon Heath and Wesley Stokes against Ohio State in this ball game. Points been harder to come by, and you have to give a lot of credit to the Dayton perimeter defense. They have been up in their faces, making them put the ball on the floor. They've done a pretty good job of getting under screens to keep them from turning the corner. Heath and Stokes. Tonight have combined for 20 points. 30 below their combined total of last night. Heath is 13 and Stokes is 7. And we have not again mentioned Sanders with a touch, you know, the, the second half. I mean, he, I thought he played great. He did, but, but he's more of a garbage player. He's not really a go-to guy inside. He's gotten most of his touches by going after the ball. But I, I mean, I don't think he's even touched it on these trips. He, you know he, what I mean? He has not. Yeah. But he's not been a guy they look to as well. Right. It's, they, they've been going more to Walt. Mm -hmm. And Walton has had a nice game. I would rather him a little closer to the rim coming down the stretch though, Walt. No question. 33.7. The time remaining in regulation play. We've already had one overtime game here. Earlier today, Villanova 
came from five points down with 22 seconds left in regulation to beat Santa Clara in OT to advance to the fifth place game. They'll play Ohio State, a 77 to 71 winner in the first game of the day here over Central Michigan. Really have to box out. Guards are generally going to end up at the free throw line late in the game. You've got to have a little courage and knock them down. If there is a miss here, Wallacekowski and Scott are able to get to the rim. Two big free throws by Mark Jones. He has nine points. 30 seconds left. San Diego State has to hurry down by five. Stokes, a runner, way off. There's Sanders again. There's a, the garbage and a quick timeout. Defensively, Dayton's got to make them use time when you're in control like that. Well, Steve Fisher said, and after you watch Sanders play a couple of times, it's certainly true that Sanders does as much just on effort and intensity as anybody you'll see in college basketball. Well, he's yeah. so active, he never gives up. He's always got his eye on the ball, and he's got a nose for the ball. But the thing I like about him most, he rebounds out of his area, and mm -hmm. that shows you how much desire he's got. And you know who else? Wallaskowski does that, too, and he's not near as quick or elevates as well as Sanders. Kansas leads that game against Michigan State 17 to 12. We'll get to there as soon as we're finished here. Our coverage of the EA Sports Maui Invitation will continue on ESPN 2 with Hawaii and Chaminade. Sanders numbers tonight 21 points, 17 rebounds, eight of those 17 boards at the offensive end. Williams and Marshall trying to free themselves on the inbounds. Jones gets it into Williams. 19 seconds left and the foul committed by Sanders. I'll tell you, great organization, Sean, on that inbounds. One to get it in, one to find the outlet, and then the post-up was there by Wallaskowski right at half court. Brian Gregory knew he was getting a great job. It's certainly a wonderful thing, guys, when your first coaching job can be at a program like this that has so much going for it. Mm -hmm. And you're taking over a healthy program. A lot of times when an assistant gets an opportunity, it's when things have gone wrong at a place and you've got a lot of cleanup work to do. Here, they've got some very well-schooled players that were coached by a very good coach and Oliver Purnell now at Clemson. And Brian Gregory taking over a very good situation. You might say the barn was full. Yeah, they have a great arena, great fan support, among the best in the country. It's an excellent school in a nice city. A barn? Isn't it a cupboard? A, well, the cupboard now you're making bare. a barn. Well, the barn <laughs> was bare when I got the seat in job, and it was bare when I left it. <laughs> <laughs> a certain cabinet was probably empty when you left, too. <laughs> For this little purpose. <laughs> Marshall with that big free throw to put the margin back to four. They made just about all their free throws down the stretch to seal their win Friday night at Pepperdine, and they're doing it again here today against San Diego State. Drive and find somebody. Stokes out of control. He had a gap, but threw up an awkward shot. And Dayton 11 seconds away from victory, barring something miraculous now. Jones will go back to the free throw line. Uh, Jay mentioned Oliver Purnell. These guys know how to play. And Brian doesn't have to waste his time in areas that new coaches generally do. No, they don't foul here. They make sure they all come in and rebound. I mean, this stuff is just reaction from being well coached and winning. And they've done a very nice job of putting this game away. It's not away yet, but one of the ways you do that is by stepping to the line and knocking down big free throws. It's Williams, the shooter, who's had the best game of his career. Dayton's made nine straight free throws. Tough to beat when you knock down your free throws at the end of a ball game. Second one is off, a six-point game, 10 seconds to go. He has to shoot a three. A rebound down to Wallace He's fouled, and Dayton is going to advance to the championship game on their second trip ever to the EA Sports Maui Invitational. They'll go to the championship game for the first time. The other time they were here was in the year 2000 when they finished third. And what a great start to his head coaching career for Brian with his wife Yvette, daughter Isabella, here in attendance. And they're smiling, but not Brian yet. 
I think that's the first time Yvette's been relaxed all night tonight, too. We've seen her over there for a while this evening, and she clearly has been feeling the stress. Understandably so, it is a very tough thing to be a coach's wife. The hardest job, I think. You see the real world. Nobody else does. Wallace Kowski applying the finishing touches. He has 14 points. Stokes. Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> he didn't even want that to go in. That was about a 30-footer to account for the final margin. Dayton 76 and San Diego State 71. Now for Bill Raftery and Jay Bill of Sean McDonough saying so long. We'll join you again on ESPN2 with Hawaiian Chaminade at the top of the hour. Now let's send you to Allen Fieldhouse, Michigan State and Kansas. Dan Schulman, Dick Vital, and Doris Burke. Here at Allen Fieldhouse, a seven-point lead for the Kansas Jayhawks over Michigan State. And what an unbelievable start to this game it's been. J.R. Giddens, a freshman from Oklahoma City, getting a huge standing ovation as he goes out to the game after back-to-back, -back, unbelievable, gravity-defying dunks here in this game tonight. You know, talking to Bill Self, he told me yesterday, he said that right now he's a better athlete than he is a player, but he will become a very good player once he learns all the nuances and what it takes to play in the game of basketball on a collegiate level. Based on what we just saw, if he can become as good a player as he is an athlete, he's going to be something special. There's no doubt about it. You can't teach some of the things he can do. Bryant Nash and Jeff Hawkins have checked into the game and out for the Jayhawks. Nash a very good athlete as well. Graves, no. Padgett can't come up with a rebound, and here's Anderson for the Spartans. What a pace early in this game. There's a travel on Davis. The big guy again hanging out on the perimeter, and he turns it over. He's having a tough time right now. Early in the game, Davis really struggling. Look at Giddens enjoying his time here in a Kansas uniform, and why not? He absolutely electrified 16,000 people and Dickie V. Here at Allen Fieldhouse. Here's the first dunk. Can't Ooh. teach that. No. And then the second one, he comes up with a turnover, just beats everybody down the floor and jams it home. I tell you, the enthusiasm. I talked to Danny Manning before the game, and one of my favorite players. In fact, as you know, in my book, I have a chapter that I rate the best players in my 25 years on ESPN. My goal, my silver, and my bronze. And on my goal, I had Danny Manning as one of the Super Seven because I will never forget how he carried Kansas in 1988. Danny and the Miracles, Larry Brown did a marvelous job in watching him on to win that national title. There's his number, number 25. He was Mr. Versatility. He told me, he says, I love the enthusiasm of the college game here. After you now, let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, Dan, it's been just 10 minutes to what promises to be an incredibly difficult schedule for Michigan State. For the first time in history, Tom Izzo's program will take on the likes of Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, Syracuse, and UCLA. Never before has one program played that five teams in history, and he talked about two things, Dick Vitale. He said it's a delicate balance to walk between confidence and competition. He knows you call for competition. He wants all that competition. He does worry that he has some youth on this team and what their reaction will be if they lose a couple of these games. You know, Doris, it's really interesting because when he did a lot of the planning, he was anticipating Marcus Taylor could have been there. Yep. Are you ready for this? Zach Randolph could yep. be there. Those two guys would be seniors right now with this club. So when he made the scheduling, he was thinking about his roster and also a kid that's not here by the name of Lorbeck. Lorbeck's now playing in Italy, who went to the NBA draft and pulled his name out when he realized he wasn't going to be drafted, but he signed with an agent and therefore gave up his eligibility. Well, let's compare that to a guy who did stick around for all four years right here in Lawrence, Kansas, and had one of the great all-time collegiate basketball careers as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college hoops. It's time to flash back into the archives. Ever had in the Kansas uniform, and that is saying something. Look at Collison on the floor. This is the shot, but Mollison with the rebound and the putback, he's already got a double-double. What a phenomenal performance by Mollison. He doesn't want to leave, man. He's had such a great game. He's not want to leave. He's a guy's winner for me. Great performance, son. I mean, that was unbelievable. I don't know how many games you and I did together last year, but I know we didn't do a better game than that Kansas-Texas game right here. That was really special. I tell you, as you can see there, I've given two standard ovations. Once was for the Admiral David Robinson and Mr. Nick Collison. 
David also made my Super 7 along with guys like Chris Mullen and Patrick Ewing. Hey, by the way, we wish nothing but the best to Alonzo yes. Mourning, a genuine warrior and just an incredible, fierce competitor. And based on what he achieved in Georgetown and in the NBA, I really believe, Dan, he should be a Hall of Famer. Alonzo, we wish you nothing but the best as he's waiting for a kidney transplant. You brought so much honor and pride to the jersey you represented. By the way, if you saw Collison and you weren't with us off the top of the show, Collison is here because he is having his jersey retired tonight. He was drafted by Seattle, but shoulder injuries have cost him his entire rookie season, and at halftime tonight, they will unfurl that banner in honor of Nick Collison, one of the all-time greats, and that's saying something here in Kansas. He's a consensus first-team All-American, and that's one of the criteria. Always played so hard really understood the game, so coachable. I really believe that the days of a Hendrick and a Collison, as a tandem, we will not see two star players of that quality remain in school for the entire four years. And as you say, had Wayne Simeon not gotten hurt, they just might have delivered a national championship here to Kansas. Some of the other players who have had their jerseys retired, including some recent ones, Drew Gooden and Paul Pierce, right for friends as well. You know, but we can't take anything away from Carmelo and company. Oh. Bottom line, Mr. Simeon wasn't there, but Syracuse and Carmelo Anthony and McNamara and that whole gang of Keith Warwick really did a great job marching on. In fact, they could lay claim to the Big 12. Tell me if I'm not right or wrong. See, my memory, you know, you get older, your memory goes, yeah. think about this. Yeah. They beat Oklahoma, yeah. they, get there, they beat Texas, yeah. and they beat Kansas. Yeah. Hey, Big 12 champs. Yeah. <laughs> Big 12 champs. I, I, I think in the second round, they beat Oklahoma State. I think they beat four of the yeah, they did. tournaments. Yeah, yeah. You're, right. you're right. Yeah, And they began the season as an unranked team. So when you're sitting there saying, well, it's going to be UConn and Duke in the national championship game, I mean, who knows what's going to happen this year, right? Yeah, we're already we've seen Duke struggle with Detroit. We've seen Connecticut struggle with Yale. We've seen Michigan State struggle with Bucknell, who shot one for 17. Pat Flannery, their coach, must have had them in the gym the next day, shooting free throws all day long. One of the great lines I ever heard Jimmy B used to say, is ready for this? Yeah. He said, everybody criticized me about my graduation rate at NC State. How come buddy, nobody gave me credit for all I graduated at Johns Hopkins and at Bucknell? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Feast Week presented by eBay continues with the preseason NIT semifinals tomorrow at e on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. It's Utah taking on Texas Tech and at a 930 Eastern Georgia Tech against the number one team of the nation, the Connecticut Huskies. And you want to talk about a team that is loaded, Jim Calhoun has some talent he's too deep at just about every position they've got a player Charlie Villanueva waiting to get eligible not even playing yet yet still they have unbelievable depth and talent right now on that UConn team you know Villanueva originally committed to Bill Self in Illinois and Gordon is right. for a great tandem yeah. but Georgia Tech's got you talk about a three guard concept they have that as well and they'll get Will Bynum eligible soon and transfer from out of Arizona and what a matchup Rick Majerus and also Mr. Bobby Knight in the semifinal. The foul on Delco Raleigh his second Andreas is going to come back into the game Raleigh in the season opener against Bucknell fouled out in only nine minutes of playing time Paul Davis fouled out as well Raleigh's a redshirt freshman Drew Namick who's going to play up front has already tonight he's a freshman and again Tom Izzo is used to having a number of upperclassmen in the front court, big, strong, experienced guys who know how to play the game. He doesn't quite have that luxury on this team right now. Yeah, but don't cry for him because that perimeter game is dynamite. <laughs> That'll make up for it. A lot of college coaches wish they had some of those people out of perimeter. And Tom is such a winner. These kids are going to get better and better and certainly be a threat all year long. Miles. Maybe the corner. Simeon couldn't come up with it cleanly. Hawkins is in the game as well. Miles, another three. Hit one earlier. Loose ball in the corner, saved, but into the hands of the Jayhawks. They want Miles to be a little bit more assertive offensively. Hawkins with a miss. Nash flying over the back for the rebound, knocked it loose. Still on the floor. Simeon hits the deck, and Kansas comes up with yet another loose ball. And coaches got to love that. They really got to love that play. That's exactly what Bill Self has been trying to drill into his team. You've got to play tough against the Tom Izzo coach team. And Tom Izzo told me, he said, this is the softest team we've had in nine, nine years. I think he's just trying to set him up. That's coach speak. And you see him diving on the floor. Mitch Albin and I, I was on Mitch Albin show to superstar journalist on Detroit WJR yesterday. And he told me, he said, hey, 
Tom Izzo, I think, likes to have a team that's not so highly rated so he can sneak up behind you. But he's not sneaking up on anyone but with the recruits he's bringing in. Although, as Doris mentioned, they have an absolute killer schedule playing Duke and Oklahoma next week and wow. Kentucky the week after Syracuse. that. And they go to UCLA and they go to Syracuse. And not to mention the Big Ten schedule. In some field, this might be the toughest schedule any team has ever had. Well, you know, I think it's really a way to toughen his kids up. It's not going to hurt a loss here and a loss there. And they're going to be certainly tough to beat at home. You and I will be down here when they play against, as you look here in their first eight seasons. Look at his achievements. Incredible. But, you know, bottom line is, at home, they're going to be so tough yeah. to beat down here. Even though he's always gone out and played everybody, he's got the fourth most wins of any coach ever in their first eight seasons. Now, again, we're having for the second time tonight some kind of a timing issue that Jim Burr is trying to work out over on the far side of the floor. It gives us a chance to tell you about the Maui Invitational. This feast week presented by eBay continues tomorrow. It'll be Villanova and Ohio State. That is the fifth place game out of the Maui at 2 Eastern. Then San Diego State will take on the loser of Hawaii and Chaminade. And then the championship game will be Dayton against the winner of Hawaii and Chaminade. An all-Hawaiian semifinal going on tonight. And the championship game will be tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. Chaminade, of course, pulled off maybe the biggest upset. You talk about some upsets already this year when they beat Ralph Sampson in Virginia back in 82. Now, they beat Villanova this year, but Villanova's still dealing with some of the suspensions from that phone card situation last year. So Chaminade knocked him off and now trying to get to the championship game. As you mentioned also a little bit earlier, one of the great games in this series, Kansas and Michigan State, took place back in 1986 when Dick then, like now, there was a little bit of controversy about the game clock, and John Heathcote was some kind of upset. The clock is not running. It's been stuck on 220. Now, finally, it starts again. And John Heathcote is going to raise some men. And meanwhile, Heathcote is trying to get the clock problem correct. You remember this game well, huh? Oh, it was really a special game. Scott Skiles played in it. Skiles is now rumored to be the coach of the Chicago Bulls. Kansas went on to win the game in beat, overtime and then lost to the Final Four. Yeah, to beat Jimmy V in the Elite Eight to go on to the Final Four. The Final Four that year was Louisville and Duke in the final. Kansas third in the all-time win list. In the last couple of years, have made significant strides on North Carolina, although Roy Williams are trying to change that. And the crowd getting a little bit restless here with the delay. Tom Izzo has a question for Jim Burr. They put eight seconds back on the clock. Everybody's contented with that. Tom Izzo questioning something now about the inbounds play, but evidently Jim Burr has satisfied his concern, and we're ready to play basketball. Simeon with a long jump hook and a great block out there by Davis, keeping Padgett away from the ball. Yeah, Davis could be possibly the best big kid in the Big Ten. He really has that ability to go inside and outside. Allen Anderson, he is so dangerous driving the ball up the court in transition. Nash with a miss, Hill with a rebound, and the Spartans are getting right back into this game. they got to get Hill and Anderson going offensively. He's going to get Hill some looks. He can shoot that perimeter jump shot. Andreas looking inside to Davis. Padgett on his back. Simeon down for the double team. Nice pass by Davis. Very versatile. And he gets it right back from Andreas. Gets his man in the air. And he draws the foul on David Padgett. And he's certainly going to draw a lot of people around him every time he touches the ball since he is their really only big-time offensive threat down in a low box. Hey, talk about Michigan State's dominance. Think about this. They've won or shared the Big Ten title four straight years, and the only other clubs to do that, Indiana did it 73 to 76, Ohio State did it 60 to 64, and Chicago when they were in the Big Ten University in 1907 and 1910. Wow. His free throw is up and good for Davis. Change is coming for Kansas. Graves will come in for Padgett. Padgett leads with two fouls, and Graves comes back in with two fouls. Michael Lee returns for Kansas as well, and freshman Shannon Brown back into the game for Michigan State. By the way, there's another very talented freshman in this Spartan program, Brandon Cotton, another McDonald's All-American. Stress fracture. Uh, yeah, diagnosed yesterday with a stress fracture in his foot, and he will miss about a month. And he's a true point guard, too. Simeon muscles it up, and he'll go to the line as well. Simeon is so tough to handle on the interior. There are many guys in college basketball physically that can play him one-on-one -on -one down on a low box. That was sheer strength that he was able to convert on the interior.
Look at the strength inside. He's wide open, first of all. Loses a little handle, good defensive rotation over, and then makes contact. Gives him a three-point opportunity. Simeon averaged just over 14 points per game last year. He's got 14 already here tonight. Had that shoulder injury against the University of Missouri, Kansas City last year. And now he just played some pretty good defense on Davis, forcing him to alter the shot. So Wayne Simeon, a big story here early tonight as Kansas leads by four. Back in Lawrence, Kansas. Kansas by four and celebrating number four here tonight. And he's standing by with our Doris Burke. Doris. Yeah, Dan, I don't know that I can say welcome home anymore. For the first time in four years, Nick Collison will not be a Jayhawk. What was your reaction walking into Allen Fieldhouse tonight, knowing that you weren't suiting up? It's really strange. It's uh, obviously a much different view from the from the uh, crowd. And uh, it feels weird. I wish I could be out there, to tell you the truth. I think for all of us, it's, it's somewhat strange not to see Roy Williams over there on the sideline. Can you tell us, even though it wasn't going to impact you, what your reaction was when you heard he was going to North Carolina? Well, I was disappointed uh, because, you know, selfishly, it would be great to, to still have the coaches here that, you know, I played for and I'd be able to come back and, and see people I knew. But, um, you know, I, it's not really fair for me to, to um, you know, have that point of view because, you know, he was never selfish with us in, in things he did. And, uh, you know, he's definitely at a great place in Carolina doing what he wants to do. And uh, I watched him last night, and a lot of stuff looked real familiar. He's done a good job out there. Tonight, you'll have your jersey retired. Your name will go up along the likes of uh, Paul Pierce, Drew Gooden. Can you give us your feelings about what it'll be like? Yeah, it's an unbelievable honor here, uh, you know, Kansas, with all the great players, coaches that have been here. Uh, to get recognized like that is unbelievable. It's something that'll be up forever. And um, I'm very proud of what's going to happen today. Injuries will keep you out of your first NBA season. Tell us what's going on with your shoulders. Yeah, I separated my left shoulder, and uh, I had to have surgery to uh, repair it. My right shoulder is a little unstable, and since I'm going to miss the year with the left, I'm going to uh, tighten that up, too. Uh, sounds kind of like a car, huh? Get that tightened up here and there. But uh, I'm going to get my right shoulder worked on, so hopefully I won't separate that one in the next year or two, because that would uh, that'd be bad to miss two years instead of just one. Congratulations on a good career, and best of luck with your rehab. All right, thanks a lot. Dan, back to you. All right, Doris, thank you. Jeff Graves at the line after the second foul committed by Paul Davis. So Davis goes out, and Drew Namick, a freshman from Muskegon, Michigan, is back into the game as Graves knocks down the first free throw. But, you know, XJ Hawks now in the NBA. We had Nick there, LaFrance with the Celtics, Pierce with the Celtics, Pollard with the Pacers, most attack with the Jazz, Vaughn with the Hawks, Gooden with the Magic, Heinrich with the Bulls, and Collison with the Sockers. <laughs> Not a bad program for 15 years at a Roy Williams, huh? No, he did an amazing yeah. job, and he'll do an amazing job in North Carolina. He's just one of those special communicators who has a great understanding from how to win, about shot selection, but so does Bill Self. You don't win the way self won at Tulsa, Illinois, and not know what you're doing. There's Brown with a travel. Third time tonight that a Michigan State player just tried to make the move a little bit too quickly on the perimeter and then called for steps. You know, he played for Proviso East High School out of Illinois, Mr. Basketball. Same high school that produced Doc Rivers. They're going to work for the same ABC and they'll do a great job. Also, the bottom line is they had Michael Finley one year, a guy named Donnie Boyce. Sherelle Ford and the three amigos and won the state championship in Illinois. Thomas are not happy. Another foul call against Michigan State. This one on Andreas. Already as many turnovers tonight as they had the entire game against Bucknell. A game they could have lost had Bucknell not missed 16 of the 17 free throws they That's took. That's amazing. That's amazing. When I saw that number, it blew me away. You told that to me a few days ago. I was with you down in Florida. You said, did you hear what Bucknell did last night? Oh, you said it a little louder than that. And oh, I didn't believe you. <laughs> My guy Danny was enjoying the beautiful beaches of Siesta Key. <laughs> came from Canada with his lovely wife Sarah his three beautiful children stayed at my house yes. did we take care of you you took care I have files for formal adoption papers I, I, I want to become your son I want the whole family to become part of the Vital family Andreas has picked up his second foul as the the foul problems continue to mount for both teams both teams having to go really deep here in the first half. Justin Ackerman, a freshman from Garden City, Michigan, 6'9 and 265, number 54. Hit of the game for the first time for Michigan State. Yeah, just give him a big body on the inside, lay some screen. He's a walk-on who's been a minor league pitcher in the Seattle Mariners system the last three years. 
There's Giddens. He had the two monster dunks earlier. Back into the game as he snares the defensive rebound. He's so active as a player on that floor. He's very active. We haven't seen the real Shannon Brown yet. When that kid gets going, man, you're going to see something special. Yeah. He was co-MVP in the Jordan Classic, and the other guy with him, coming into LeBron James. Yeah. Well, if you're co-anything with LeBron, you're pretty good. Here exactly. come the Jayhawks on the run. Michael Lee, and a block is called as Kansas is really forcing the issue right now and piling up the fouls on a Michigan State. This one will go against Chris Hill, and that is his second foul of the game. We now have five Michigan State players, each with two fouls. Fortunately, a very deep basketball team, especially on a perimeter. As you look at Tom Izzo, what a job he's done since taking over from Judd Heathcote. One of the best compliments you can pay a coach is to look at his coaching tree, guys, assistants wow. of his who have gone on to other jobs. Well, Tom Crean, as we see the job he's done at Marquette, Stan Heath now going to do a great job down in Arkansas. Blank Gregory, who I know is going to be special at Dayton, like Marlins at Cleveland State, where Roy Williams will be playing his next game. North Carolina going out there. Maybe Javon Williams, one of the most underrated players back home. And Stan Joplin at Toledo. I saw Stan the other day. I spoke at IPFW down in Fort Wayne. I was down there and they opened the season against Toledo. By the way, they should get in the conference. IPFW, Horizon or the Big Contact. Brown inside with a miss. Rockman looking for the rebound. Brown comes up with it again, and Jeff Graves with a block. Well, Graves gives him a lot of size inside. He is Simeon. I mean, they feed off the enthusiasm of this crowd. They lost one game here last year. It was through an incredible performance by Arizona. As you watch Graves rotating over with the block shot. That game was so unique, too. Kansas jumped out on Arizona big early in that game, better than 20, and Arizona came all the way back. Stoudemire had a phenomenal game. Well, Bill Self hoping he's got three very talented big guys for those two spots on the inside in Simeon, Graves, and Padgett. Just he like does. last year, there was no Padgett, but obviously there was a Collison until Simeon got hurt, and that's why Kansas was a little bit thin inside. The shot will go down for Allen Anderson, who has had some very strong offensive moves here in this game. Well, I know Mrs. Izzo jumps up and cheers for her husband right there with that drive from the wing. Tom Izzo utilizing that driving force from the wings with his players trying to take advantage of the strengths. It's very important to know the strengths and weaknesses of your team. Michigan State shooting the ball better after a slow start, hanging around here with Kansas down seven, despite a lot of foul trouble that has forced Tom Izzo very deep into his lineup. Trying to run that little weave up on top, then lock to the post player on the box. And another, another travel, yeah. This little traveling music here up in Rock Chalk, Jay Hawk Land. Well, as mentioned, IPFW, the beautiful people there, Coach Noel and Coach Pope, and talk about different philosophies and scheduling. They will schedule anyone who played 18 road games, then play in the likes of Iowa State and Purdue, and or play in Miami and West Virginia. But they have to do it because they want to get attention. They've become Division One, and now they want to get a conference to look at it. And that'd be great, I really believe, for the Horizon or the Mid Continent. Tom Izzo on a different level, scheduling anybody who can on the feed for Miles. I tell you, Miles has got eyes behind his head. He is so unique. His grandma living down in Illinois with Detroit jumps with joy. She says, that's my guy. That's my guy. Now four on two break. And Giddens travels. You know, Miles doesn't get a lot of attention because he doesn't score a lot of points. But you ask guys like Langford and Simeon, and they say Miles is as good as anybody because he's a throwback. He's a pass-first point guard. Yeah, he's a guy that wants to win, and he understands his role on the floor. Same with Raymond Felton, he understands his role. I watched North Carolina for a few minutes in their first two games. I'm going to tell you something. They were electrifying their starting five. They just are very thin. They don't have a bench at all right now. And a good guy off the bench playing well, Jack McNamara. An unpopular call here at Allen Fieldhouse is Ted Hillary. Calls a foul on J.R. Giddens, I believe, for grabbing a jersey, and that'll be the second on Giddens. I'll tell you, standing right next to Bill Self on that side, and there's a guy ready for a head job, Mr. Roberts. Norm goes out of the crew, understands players, an outstanding assistant to Bill Self. Who two years, you know, came very close to going to the Final Four and got to the Elite Eight. Shannon Brown misses the first. 
you know, Kansas, there's Roberts, a, an impressive first half here for Kansas. Did we forget that Langford went out and played only three minutes in this game because of the foul trouble? Exactly. They still get a nine point lead. I know that's a big plus for them. That's because of the play of getting off the bench. Yeah. You know, I mentioned Elite Eight. In 2000, they were in the Elite Eight. As you look at Langford, they lost to North Carolina. Bill Dutchridge's club beat them. And they also lost to Illinois in the Elite Eight. They lost to Arizona in a tough game. He's had some great years at Illinois, 25 and 7, 26 and 9, 27 and 8. He and Tom Izzo split last year. Yeah. He put the hurt on. I mean, the orange crush must have been going nuts in Champagne. 70 to 40 in a blowout. And then Tom Izzo, he got a chance. He beat that once last year as well at home. The weave up top. A little time off the clock here for Kansas. Man, man defense. Miles calling out of play, positioning Nash where he wants him. Torbert bodying up on Miles. The three for Michael Lee isn't there, and the rebound of the Spartans. He shot 50% last year from the three-point line. They're hoping he gives him a little threat. He didn't want to miss that three-point shooter from Heinrich, yeah. who was so dynamic out there on the collegiate level for the three. You just can't replace guys like Collison and Heinrich. No. Everybody else has to take their game to a new level. But you know, you know they're leaving, so you plan in the recruiting process. And it's not like a kid who just bolts on right. You have no idea like what this Taylor did at Michigan State. Well, and Bill Self had to get all those recruits to stay after Roy Williams left for Carolina. Self went to each of them one by one and convinced all of them to still come to Lawrence. Kansas by eight, 321 to go, first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, presented by eBay. Way better gifts and a better way to buy them. This holiday season, do it eBay. And in part by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. And Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. of ESPN East Week. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas. Dan Schumann and Dick Vitale here. What a game. What a, a little bit ragged, but a great atmosphere, great intensity as Kansas leads Michigan State. The Spartans, after winning or sharing four straight Big Ten titles, finished fifth two years ago, third last year. Are they the class of the Big Ten right now? Well, you know, everybody, if you ask anybody about the Big Ten, immediately you hear the name Michigan State and you hear the name Illinois. You never, ever hear the name Wisconsin. And all Wisconsin's done at Bo Ryan is win the Big Ten two yeah. years in a row. And they're outstanding again. Devin Harris may be the best secret in America, other than a kid who put a show on against Indiana last night, Matt Frege, who I spoke about the other day for Vanderbilt as they beat Indiana. I really think, watch for a surprise this year. I think Michigan, remember this thing, Deion Harris, a diaper dandy, was Mr. Basketball in Michigan. Tommy Abaco is going to start to get his share of players from the state as well. Kind of got the, the band lifted off him finally. I think the Wolverines with Daniel Horton, Bernard Robinson, I think they can create some problems to get to that first division. Tim McGrackis into the game and out for Michigan State. Semi in with a miss. And bringing the rebound down is Namick. Both teams have gone to the smaller lineup now, Dick. Big guys in foul trouble on both sides, and it's really four perimeter players and one big on the floor for both teams. Well, you know, Namick and also Raleigh at least getting a few minutes, getting a little bit of what it's like to play in this kind of environment. The one great thing about a game like this, you find your strengths and weaknesses rather than pounding with some cupcakes yeah. like some guys are doing. And Tom Izzo's a little bit worried about it, how difficult the schedule is. Kansas also with a difficult schedule. There's a steal by Miles. He's had a great first half here tonight. A little hesitation. The scoop won't go, and Namick comes down with another rebound. He had the school record last year, nine steals against Iowa State. Miles, or Lee rather, committing a foul on the catch of the other end of the floor by Ager. Take a Miles, look. I should say. Take a look at the Big 12. We talked about the Big 10. The Big 12 from top to bottom to me is probably going to be the best conference in America again. When you look there, look at the quality of teams in that league. Missouri's going to be dynamite again. Yeah. Certainly with Baldy and Arthur Johnson, Quinn Snyder's club. Oklahoma, who will oh. see against Michigan State up at Auburn Hills next week. They're going to have another very dangerous team. Hey, freshman Drew Lavender is a type of Danny. Kelvin Sampson knows how to win. 
outstanding. Kim McKenzie playing well. I should be RBI right now with a big 12. Last season, they were number one. I'll tell you this, bottom line also, don't count out teams like Texas Tech. I mean, Bobby Knight's got a very athletic team. They get Jackson on the perimeter doing well. And I'll say it again. Down in Indiana, they got some classicals administrators. <laughs> no, don't name the floor after Robert Montgomery Knight because he's named after Branch for practice. Even though they got a little plaque and nobody even knows about it. Name the building, man. Name the building. Name it the Assembly Hall slash Robert Montgomery Knight Center. Think it'll happen? It should for what he did for that university in basketball. Ager with a three on the feed from Torbert. And Maurice Ager, such a talented guy, but playing behind Anderson and Hill and Torbert. But as you mentioned, he led them in scoring in the postseason last year. Healthier this year, although still not 100% with a bit of a tender Achilles. And he's got a chance to do some things for the Spartans this year. Well, you mentioned Texas Tech. Tomorrow night, Feast Week, presented by eBay, continues on ESPN and ESPN2. It is Bob Knight's Texas Tech Red Raiders taking on the Utes at 7 Eastern over on ESPN2. And then the second semifinal for the preseason NIT, the number one team in the country, the Connecticut Huskies, against Georgia Tech, 930 Eastern, right here on ESPN. You know, Georgia Tech may have a little problem in terms of defending inside. As you look at Knight versus Calhoun, certainly a Hall of Fame going against a future Hall of Famer in Jim Calhoun. I don't think there's any doubt that he's heading for the Hall of Fame for what he's done with that Connecticut program. Andrew Bogut is going to be a special player, though, when you think about the fact that Bogut is really, really special. Two, two years ago, Dick Simeon, a freshman, playing behind Gooden and Collison. Last year as a sophomore, along with Collison, he gets hurt. Now as a junior, the main man in the middle is looking like it here tonight. Yeah, he really is. You know, Bobby Knight's got to get it go against Rick Majerus first and that kid Bogut what a freshman he is down there in Utah at 19 and 18 against Minnesota I know one of your favorite things every year is the, the new kids the Dr. Dandies yeah, who come in the game right I get excited seeing the new kids on a block if they live up to the reputations out of high school how about Giddens here tonight so far stolen by Michigan State and Ager's going to slow it down nice denial right there first defense by Michigan State so well coached. Both these guys are fierce competitors or winners. And a foul from behind by Nash. Michigan State has scored the last five points in this game. And now they've got a chance to cut the Kansas lead down to two. Yeah, you know when it got to nine, you could either get a spurt and break it open big time, or in the case of Michigan State, reflecting Tom Izzo, they're fighting and scrapping. They're getting it in with halftime where they're going in in decent shape. I'll tell you the one thing that good coaches understand and their players understand their teaching methods is shot selection. That is the difference in becoming a big time winner sometimes and losing. Understanding shot selection. It rims out on Anderson. Bill Self, uh, proponent as well of high percentage shots, pounding the ball inside, letting the ball go through the post. And again, a Kind of a transition transition stage right now for this Kansas program as they get to know their new coach and even some of the players. Keith Langford, for one, he's writing a, a weekly column in the student newspaper here. He says, we're not where we need to be yet. We're getting used to him. He's getting used to us, and it's still a work in progress right now. I'll tell you one thing. Mr. Langford's got one of the toughest critics to deal with. His mom, man, his mom. She is a tough critic on him on when he plays. Another scramble on the floor. What else is new? This time the Spartans come up with the ball. Simeon like come behind the play. It really is. Torbert's pass. And Ackerman couldn't handle the pass. Great look by Torbert. Very unselfish. By the way, John Smith was going to coach of the year in the Big Ten in football. 84 did a great job coming over Florida. And Kansas ball eligible in football this year at 6-6. Six six. Mangino, man, are you shocked? And that's <laughs> little Lignini, Ravioli, Mark Mangino. I don't know that was coming. Shot oh. clock at two. Look at that screen. And the screen is called for the foul on Ackerman. Coming up at the halftime, Carl Ravage, Digger Phelps, and Steve Lavin will look at some of the stories from all around the world of sports, including his Kurt Schilling staying or leaving, and if he's leaving, where's he going? An all-access look at Bill Self's program here over to Kansas, and a look in on Tulsa at Oklahoma. Tulsa, one of the former stops for Bill Self. Hey, I want to hear Carl Ravage tell me about Schilling. Is he leaving? Is he staying? And what about my guy A-Rod? Is he going to be leaving Texas? Giddens misses the three. Ackerman the rebound, and we've got 
another foul. Jim Burr has this one. What do you think about A Rod? Where's he going to land? Ah, Boston be a great place. Can you imagine what it'd do to that green monster? I mean, it'd be <laughs> unbelievable what he would do out there. You think Boston could have A Rod and Schilling and Nomar and Pedro and all no, the other guys here together? No, no, because then they'd be a three, a three oh, way deal, right? It'd have to be a deal somewhere, obviously. You, you'd love to be a baseball general manager, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd love baseball. <laughs> I just love baseball. I think yeah. it's phenomenal. People don't know that. This this man sitting beside me is a season ticket holder to the Tampa Bay Rays. And you go, how many games a year do you go? I go about 40 games a year. We got a great manager, Lou Padella, a great young outfielder, Baldelli and Crawford. I'm telling you, Huff can hit the baseball. We got some good young pitchers. You tell Paul Rabbit, she's going to be talking about those double rays a lot more next year. 500. And, and if there was any doubt, who Dick Vitale thought should be the American League Rookie of the Year? Oh, Rocco Baldelli, are you <laughs> kidding me? He got robbed. What a half for Simeon. His 18 point. He's got half of the Kansas points. He had a brilliant performance inside. Especially early. He carried the Lankford on that sideline. Getting into foul trouble. On their feet again. Here at Allen Fieldhouse. What a passion they have. The Rock Chalk Jay Hawk. One of the great environments. Certainly a super environment at present. We'll be there next Wednesday yep. when the Dukies come in. Can't that wait. place will be rocking. I have a book signing, by the way, and I hope you're at it next Wednesday when I'm up there at Michigan State. So, I mean, I hope you're there, okay? Dick Vitale, living a dream, right? Next way, he did one today, doing one up in East Lansing next week. Feast Week presented by eBay. Continues on ESPN and ESPN2 tomorrow night with the semifinals of the preseason NIT. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech taking on Rick Majerus of the Utes over on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. And then Jim Calhoun's Huskies against Georgia Tech. Ben Gordon outside. Emeka Okafor inside. Denham Brown much more assertive this year. The Huskies are loaded. You know, boy, you would have a tough break losing Chris Bosch and Ed Nelson transfer over to Connecticut. You asked me earlier, would they do it down in Indiana named the facility after Bobby Knight? Let me just say this. If they had class the administration, they would, if they would look at it in a proper way. They're naming courts all over the country. Jim Beheim Center, Lude Olsen, uh, uh, certainly Mike Krzyzewski, and deservedly so. You cannot tell me winning three national titles, doing it the right way, never cheating, players graduating, that he hasn't earned that right. The ball knocked away by Nash, and Miles finishes it at the other end. The best to hear at the end of the half. Miles finalizes it. Way to go in with a little momentum there because it was getting a little away. Michigan State made that run back. What a great environment, Mr. Schumann. What a great environment. A monster first half for Wayne Simeon. Aaron Miles did a ton of good things as well. And the coach in the lead right now standing by with Doris Burke. Doris? Bill, you asked these guys to be more committed on the defensive end. Assess their first 20 minutes on that side of the ball. Yeah, we played hard, and Michigan State played hard, too. It's a fun game, and, and uh, Certainly not very pretty at times, but both teams are getting after it. Allen Anderson, the only guy from Michigan State who's hurt you thus far. How do you do a better job with him? Well, we got to get him to him in transition. He's so good at coming up the middle of the floor and, and using his big guys as screeners in transition. We got to do a better job with that. Good luck in the second Thank half. Dan, back to you. All right, Doris, at the half. Kansas 38, Michigan State 31. Carl, Digger, and Steve coming up on the halftime report. Jim, three. Dan, thank you very much. Exactly right. You hear Steve Lavin and Digger Phelps. I'm Carl Ravage. So we've seen a physical team. Is this a different Kansas team, or is it way too early to say that? It's way too early to say that, but you can see where they really want to go. Run, 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 and, and yet that is not Bill Self's style, but because of what they've done with Roy Williams, they're in that mode except for the freshman. But the other side of it, Michigan State, too many turnovers, 15 in the first half. That's what kept them from really making this game even closer, even having the lead. Yeah, what's tough for Michigan State is they don't have a true point guard. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that's why there's so many turnovers. You look at Kansas on the flip side, they have Aaron Miles, two Final Fours, a veteran quarterback, a veteran point guard, an extension of the coach on the floor. Michigan State has to do it by committee. They've got a lot of strong, talented perimeter players, but they don't have the one pure point guard. That's why you're seeing a lot of turnovers and a lot of... Uh, just not a, not a rhythm yet for right. Michigan State yeah. offensively. And, and Paul Davis and, and Chris Hill not a factor in the first half. Not They're yet. two best players. J.R. So Giddens, get going, freshman for Kansas, has certainly made yes. an impression. We'll come back. The headlines of the day in sports, including the latest on Kurt Schilling and if he has a decision yet on where he'll play ball. Also, Oklahoma and Tulsa highlights are coming up next. exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Norelco ultra close ultra comfortable guaranteed and NikeGridiron.com.
If men are so insensitive, why do they need nine personal comfort settings? Spectra from Norelco. Ultra close, ultra comfortable. Guaranteed. Subway's delicious low-fat sandwiches won't make up for listing Mr. Whiskers as a tax deduction. But with over 15,000 combinations under 6 grams of fat made just the way you want it, they'll help make up for your fast food foibles. Subway, good, so you don't always have to be. Some things just shouldn't change. Your fingerprints, your retina, your very DNA. So why change your wireless phone number just because you change services? Now you don't have to. Come to Radio Shack to keep your wireless number and get your choice of coverage. Just bring in your current wireless bill, and with a two-year agreement, you can pick a free Nokia color screen phone or $79.99 Samsung camera phone, and we'll transfer your number. 7,000 neighborhood stores and 30,000 helpful associates. Radio Shack. Peace Week continues. One of the main courses, of course, Kansas and Michigan State, a seven-point game at the half. Comments from Steve and Digger in just a bit. News of the day involves Kurt Schilling and, of course, the Boston Red Sox pursuit of the Arizona Diamondbacks ace. Boston will meet with Kurt Schilling tomorrow. A decision is expected by Friday, 3 o'clock Arizona time, when that decision will be made for Kurt Schilling. Meantime, college basketball tonight on the floor. Tulsa and Oklahoma. John Phillips looking for the upset here. These games have been close the last couple of times they've played. They jump out 22-11. Oklahoma can't believe they're losing this game. Oklahoma's got an answer. Lawrence McKenzie, the dish in the corner. Three-pointer. We're tied. 36-33 at the half. Second half, Jabari Brown. Jabari Brown, just throw it downtown because when he goes up, it's going down. There they go, 54-48. Oklahoma takes the big lead. They did take a big lead, 73-67. This is sort of the deciding dunk here. And with that, Oklahoma ends up pulling away 81-73, the final score here. Jason Parker goes for 18 in the loss. Florida taking a big job of getting ready to play Arizona in the tip-off classic Friday night. St. Joe's really got the perimeter game going. Did it in the second half, blowed out, win by 15. Very, very good basketball team with the guard play. Jameer Nelson, 13 points, seven boards, eight assists, five steals in that game for St. Joe's. Meantime, Wisconsin 81, Illinois 47 for the Badgers. Devin Harris, Freddie Owens, Mike Wilkinson, all in double figures. Owens led the way with 24. Four guys back going on the road next week, Steve, playing against Maryland, the ACC. You know, that Big Ten challenge. Here comes the Terps. Nice job. Here's that Maryland highlight. They lead 24-16 as Nick Kanter Medley goes through. Jamar Smith can't convert underneath here. The ball will come right back to him, and this would be considered a conversion. Maryland ends up going on and winning this game over George Mason, and these games have been close as well, historically. This one not close, although for a while it was. Diana Taurasi had 27 at the half, ends up with 31 points as UConn improves to 2-0. The Lady Huskies, of course, 2-0. Men Huskies can be seen on ESPN tomorrow night. Kansas by 7 at the half. You don't have it? Where will I find it? When you can't seem to find the baseball that's been signed, that's on eBay. A new toy you can find, the men's suit that silk line, that's on eBay. Phones that ring, organize a thing, jazz or swing, nice bling bling, that's on eBay. Buy today and it's on its way, other users say you will feel okay, that's on eBay. I lied to myself that it was over. It wasn't over and it would get worse before the end. Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. When you're looking down the barrel of a gun, time slows down, your whole life flashes by. Max Payne 2, out now on PC and Xbox. Rated M for Mature.
Hello? Can we talk about 10, 10, 9, 8, 7? Have you tried it? Well, I, I haven't have... made long distance phone calls in a while. It doesn't matter. If you make one call or 100 calls, same price. Three cents a minute and then 39 cents to connect anywhere in the United States. Oh. So do you know how it works? First you dial 10, 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7. 7. Then, then one. one. Then the area code. You know how much it is? Three cents a minute plus 39 cents for the connection. Will you try it after I yes. left your apartment? Yes, I promise you I will. You can use the little paw to uh, actually dial the 10, 10, 9, 8, 7. See, he wants you to hold hands with him. At Comcast, we bring television, communications, and technology services to people all over America. We're proud of what we do, but we're even prouder now that Comcast has joined together with the Partnership for a Drug-Free America. To help them bring their messages. Bring their messages of help, hope, and warning to our customers. Because while we're engineers, installers, and customer service representatives, we're also neighbors, friends, and parents. Oprah, it's me, Ellen. As you know, I'm here at Oxygen now, so I'm kind of like your new neighbor. Listen, speaking of which, was that Roseanne making all that racket last night? If so, we need to talk to her about that. It's noisy. All right, well, call me back. Please. Watch my new show on Oxygen on Comcast. The Ellen DeGeneres Show, weeknights at 11, only on Oxygen. The preseason NIT continues. Utah, Texas Tech on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. I mentioned the number one Lady Huskies winners tonight. The men back in action at 9.30 Eastern time on Wednesday against Georgia Tech. Well, how does this Bill Self style manifest itself on the floor? Usually with great defense. They have eight steals. They have six blocks in this game against Michigan State so far. But as the players and Self will tell you, this is a work in progress. Jay Billis with an all-access pass to a Bill Self practice, and you see it is work. Hard work. One, two, three. Hard work. All right, move them down and get loose, guys. Move them down and get loose. Let's... How hard was it for you to, to leave Illinois when this opportunity came? Well, a, a lot of people, you know, back there uh, may not believe this, but this would have been the only place I would have left Illinois for. You know, I've been here and I've felt it and, and uh, experienced what I think is an unbelievable basketball tradition. All right, pick it up a little bit. Pick it up. Move them down. What's up with you, Junior? You got a pimple or something? When you went to Illinois, you had to teach a whole new system to a whole new group of players. You didn't have juniors and seniors that had been through it to help teach the younger guys. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of a similar thing you're having to do now? I think it's probably similar, but I, I think at Illinois, it was probably guys bought in maybe even more easily than they do here. Uh, I think guys will buy in here, but also you're, you're talking about changing your system off back-to-back -back Final Four teams. Everybody's got to yell help. So you're in this position, you're denied, and as soon as you see the mistakes occur, boom, it's turn and it's a sprint down to this and take this all the way away. Take away the habit pass. Okay, let's see if they can do it real quick. Let's go. Is it easy or, or difficult in a new situation to get a read on your players quickly, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, uh, whether you can get on them or not, or how you have to have, coach them individually? I think uh, this is one thing that we do maybe a little bit different than some. We, we get on them all. Uh, in some form or fashion. Now, some take it better than others, but I, I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a big teaching point with us is no things because it's not personal. You know, you got to be coached, and we all got to be coached. You might have to actually bend your knees. New concept, athletic position. Man, I tell you what, you a, you a coach's son or what? Yes, huh? Sir. Yes, huh? Sir. My bad, coach. I'm messing with you. I also think you have to get your guys uncomfortable. If you let them operate in their comfort zone each and every day, what's going to happen when they get uncomfortable being down 10 on the road in the second half? You know what you did wrong? It's a moving screen. It's a moving screen. You're just kind of doing this. And then when you see the ball pass to Aaron, you're sprinting to the cross screen. Okay? How about this year's team? What do you see as its potential and maybe potential concerns that you're going to have? Well, we've got some concerns. Come on, guys. That's pitiful. I see this team This team as being a, a strange team. I, I really do. I see us being... A team that, when we're clicking, could be very, very good. I also see us being a team that people are going to dare us to make shots. You're back. You go ahead, hunt the guy, and put your ass to the glass and set a screen. You miss him every time. All right, let's go. This could be a great team, or it could also be a really good team. But I like our chances if things fall right. If we stay healthy, I like our chances with this squad. They got to like what they're seeing so far. Simeon's got 18. Miles and J.R. Giddens, the highlight reel. Second half is coming up. This year, 
Get everything on your wish list. Announcing the Lincoln Mercury Wish List Year End Event with savings on every Lincoln and Mercury, including Lincoln Navigator, the midsize Lincoln Aviator, and Mercury Mountaineer. Now get a no charge DVD entertainment system plus $2,000 cash back on every Lincoln and Mercury SUV. And see the all new Mercury Monterey, our safest minivan ever, during the Wish List Year End Event. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Meanwhile, at home. Hey, beat a squirt. You want something to drink? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll, I'll go get that. Okay. You're cheating hard. Where's Kelly? She had to go. Linksys wireless media adapters share photos and music from PC to TV. Linksys home networking products available at these retailers. Hey, DVDs, what did you get? CDs. Video games. Oh, I wanted cool. that one too. It's so such a good one. <clears throat> Store opens in 20 minutes, Pete. Focus. Right. right. Focus. Focus. Right. Yeah. All the new stuff. Stop by Circuit City every Tuesday and save on the hottest new releases like Bruce Almighty and X2 X Men United, just $14.99 each. Save on great gifts and dash through your list at Circuit City. We're with you. On Use 8, prescription drugs at bargain prices. More than $150 at one local pharmacy and 12 bucks for the exact same drug in another store. Janet St. James tracks who has the best drug prices in North Texas. Watch News 8 tonight at 10. No end in sight. Children locked in a lengthy custody battle. Then a phone call from Mayor Laura Miller and the judge pulls out. Tonight, trying to help a friend or using her power to influence a judge. Hear what she's telling Brett Schiff. News 8 investigates tonight at 10. ESPN Radio 103.3 FM. Real sports for real sports fans. The best that ESPN has to offer on the radio at ESPN 103.3 FM, where you'll hear the biggest names from the world of sports. NBC5's Newey Scruggs, Chuck Cooperstein, Dan Patrick, and Randy Galloway. With ESPN 103.3 FM, you get local sports center updates every 20 minutes, 24 hours a day. And ESPN 103.3 FM's where you hear every Dallas Mavericks game. ESPN 103.3 FM. exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Lincoln this holiday season dreams come true during the wishlist year-end event and your Lincoln Mercury dealer and Circuit City we're with you back in just about ready for the second half here at Lawrence Kansas kind of a ragged first half with great emotion and intensity Kansas leading Michigan State by seven what you think so far well you know I'm Obviously, as you said, it was kind of sloppy, but the bottom line is they had no answer inside for Mr. Simeon. Paul Davis, who obviously is one of the better players in the Big Ten, has to really come through in the second half. I don't think Michigan State can win unless Paul Davis gets going. He was over five in the first half. He's too talented a player, and he's got to neutralize Simeon on the interior. A very nice ceremony at halftime as Nick Collison became the latest Kansas great to have his uniform retired. And you can imagine how long and loud the standing ovation was as the, the banner was unfurled. Collison's number four raised to the rafters alongside so many other Kansas greats. And he just couldn't wipe the smile on his face. His mom is here, his dad is here. And it was a great ceremony, really. Uh, Collison with a, with a nice and, and at times a very funny speech talking about some of the moments that he has and some of the teams that they've beaten. And he's just a credit to Kansas basketball and college basketball in general. Yeah, he's a genuine student athlete, something that we really need more of in college athletics. Bottom line is he really was a guy that played within the framework of his team and all he cared about is winning two times in a row to the Final Four. He and Kirk Heinrich, what a combination. And he never, ever stopped showing the tremendous love that he had for this university and his speech was really terrific yeah, as he, I thought it was great as he told Doris Burke he'd love to be in uniform and playing tonight for the Jayhawks they'd like to have them yeah, I think yeah, they, they would, would like to have them. even though they've had some great work on the inside by Wayne Simeon look at the game track from the first half Allen Anderson despite some turnover trouble for Michigan State did some very good things offensively as Bill Self told Doris you got to slow down Anderson in transition or he'll get to the hoop and score 10 points in the first half but the big story game was Wayne Simeon they had nobody to stop him on the inside he dominated in a low box on the interior had great strength, was in control the entire first half. Somebody's got to step up and neutralize him. 
Now let's take a look at the eBay first half stats. Kansas did not shoot the ball very well for the outside, but they did force a lot of Michigan State turnovers. And in typical Kansas fashion, Roy Williams, Bill Self, doesn't matter. They turn those turnovers into points at the other end. 11 players in this game have two fouls. Six for Michigan State, five for Kansas, but none of them with three. Wayne Simeon with a monster first half. His career high is 23 points in a game. He had 18 in the first half. Let's go to Doris with some thoughts from Tom Izzo. Doris? Well, topping the discussion list were those turnovers. He said we just need to be stronger with the basketball. He really didn't think it was Kansas' pressure as much as it was mental mistakes. And then guarding the post, those 18 from Simeon really upset him, guys. Michigan State running a set play, getting a shot for Hill, who misses it. And then a tie-up, the arrow's going to give the ball to Kansas. And you can see the frustration for Tom Izzo. He was worried, not, not worried, a little bit concerned about the difficulty of the schedule. Not only that, Dick, how soon in the season these difficult games come. They've got Duke next week. They've got Kentucky the week after that. They've got Oklahoma in between Duke and Kentucky. And he's also thinking about a nice tournament they've got, the Spartan Classic this weekend, the 25th anniversary of the 79 champs, and all four teams from the Final Four that year back. Michigan State will play Indiana State this weekend and then play either Penn or DePaul on the next day. Well, there'll be no... Obviously, there'll be no error. No error. No error. No error. No error. No error. He'll be in the stands. Largest lead of the game for Kansas, but not anymore. As Spartans answer for the other end to get it down to eight. Kansas led just about the entire first half. Langford with the ball played only three minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. Did not come back after the first three minutes of the game, yet still Kansas took the lead to the break. Padgett muscled inside. The ball's on the floor. We've got another tie. -up. And this time it'll go over to Michigan State. Patrick brought the ball down and therefore neutralized his size advantage. You talk about Langford, what a big time scorer the kid is. And he sat on that sideline almost the entire first half. He was their brilliant scorer through the entire NCAA tournament run last year. A regional team in the NCAA tournament last year and the Final Four team averaged better than 18 points per game in the NCAA tournament last year. Davis for three. He is now 0 for 6 from the field in this game. They got to get him going or have no chance to win. This Miles, is too quick, too quick. Goes coast to coast. Miles from out of Jefferson High School in Portland, Oregon. Played with Michael Lee together. Miles already with 10. He might get two more right here. There it is. A little layoff. That's 12. Too many turnovers for Michigan State. No true point guard in the starting line. But Miles is making them pay. Look at them run the floor and turn those turnovers into baskets at the other end. It's a 7-1 to ratio right there. 14-2 to two in transition. 17 turnovers committed by the Michigan State Spartans in 22 minutes of basketball. As a look at Miles going coast to coast, utilizing the left hand. Now here's the steal. They're going to pop the ball out. Miles gets the ball ahead of the pack, and he gets the simple layup. One of the seven keys to win that Tom Izzo posted for his team was number two. Transition defense, make them beat you outside, no easy baskets. And then he also said, another key, we must not give them easy layups or turnovers. We cannot let them turn the turnover into a layup, my friend. That has not happened. Well, to say the least, Michigan State has fallen short in that regard so far here tonight. The last foul was on Keith Langford, his third, but he will stay in the game. It's amazing that they have a 10-point lead and Langford hasn't scored. Yep. That is incredible. Keith Langford going through a little tough time emotionally right now with his uncle Robbie Mitchell battling cancer, kidney and liver cancer. He told me how important and how really special his uncle is and how he wishes him all the luck in the world. Keith, whose mom is a counselor and was a coach. His mom was a Outstanding player played for Texas uh, over in Arlington. That last foul on Delco Raleigh of Michigan State and the redshirt freshman now has three fouls as well. Line drive three from the corner for Michael Lee. Lee and Mr. Miles play together in high school. Lee can make that three shot 50% from there. 
off the bench last year. Davis draws the foul. Lee was the sixth man, as you said, last year for Kansas. But right now, he's a starter for Bill Self. Maybe Giddens will take over at one point. But Michael Lee is the starter and a big contributor here early for Kansas. For more, here's Doris. Well, you just mentioned that they were high school teammates, Aaron Miles and Michael Lee. He was actually a better football player in high school, had scholarship offers from four different schools, knew each sit initially here at Kansas, but wanted to play basketball all along. Looks like it was a good decision tonight, guys. Yeah, it's starting to pay off for him. Hey, Doris, you're right. He was a QB, offered scholarships at Washington, Washington State, and Oregon State. He made a smart decision, man. He said, put the helmet down and let me play with that round ball, the rock. David Padgett saying, I just stood my ground, put my arms up in the air, and they called a foul on me. And it's his third as he goes out. And Jeff Graves, again, Graves dealing with a sore knee. He's got a brace on that right knee. He played only six minutes in the opening win of a Chattanooga. And Graves has come on now to replace Padgett. Been a good Chattanooga team. Jeff Lebo has done a great job with that club in his first year there last year. Yeah, competitive game, 90 to 76. Southern Conference have got a lot of key players returning. Langford, the lefty. That's what he does well. He's as good a slasher as there is in America. Taking the ball into the basket. Ager slashes to the basket at the other end. Ager's got to play a lot of minutes, man. He can put points on the board. And Tom Izzo says we're still not seeing him 100% healthy. Got a bit of a tender ankle. You know, both these clubs are going to be around. There's no yeah. doubt about it. Michigan State right now ranked fourth. Kansas ranked fifth. Kansas with that winning experience. You got guys that have been to two Final Fours. That's something that's tough to take away, man. It's really a special quality. Learning how to win. The last team that went to three straight Final Fours, Michigan State, from 99 through to 2001, as Langford drives to the bucket again and draws a foul. And since they expanded the field since 1985, there's only been Kentucky, Duke, Michigan State, and certainly now Kansas trying to make a run for the third in a row. So look at this right here. Real strong drive to the basket. That's his strength. Taking the ball to the goal. And foul trouble for Michigan State's big men again. Second game in a row. Delco Raleigh has picked up his fourth. And Drew Namick, a true freshman, is going to come in. Raleigh and Davis both fouled out in a game one against Bucknell. And Raleigh again in limited minutes. And a big foul trouble again here in game two. You know, six, six tournament games last year. Lankford averaged 18.9, shot 52.9 from the field. He loves the spotlight. He likes the big game. He's the kind of kid that responds when it comes out of the Fort Worth, Texas area. Has a brother right now. He's a good player. Being Kevin. recruited by UCLA. He's about 6'8", isn't he? Yeah, he told me UCLA, Cal. People that are recruiting him. What about Kansas? Well, see, Kansas really went for the guys they had really, they wanted. They got Russ Robinson. Yeah. Down, a great high school player from Rice High School in New York City. Langford with a steal. Davis gives up on him as Langford slams it home. He's a prolific scorer. If he gets going, it'll be lights out. The party, baby, does a T.O. That's celebrating Mr. Langford's in the action. They also got a big kid by the name of Khan coming in the seventh footer from out of Florida. All oh, Kansas here in the second half, and the lead has ballooned to 15 on this Lankford dunk. Welcome to eBay's presentation of ESPN Feast Week. What a feast it's going to be for all these Kansas players if they continue to play at this level, especially here in the second half. Simeon's been huge. Langford has come alive here in the second half. But the key ingredient in so many of these plays that Kansas has had tonight, Dick, Aaron Miles, a steal. Aaron Miles, an assist. Aaron Miles, a drive. He's been great tonight. Well, I tell you, he's one of the most underrated players in America. Delonte West is as well. Teron Francis. Jawad Williams had a big night last night. He's going to have a great year. And Chevy Trotman. The reason these guys are in so many way is they play behind such superstars and big name players. Poor job defensively right there by Kansas. No one rotated over an easy layup. Chris Hill all the way to the bucket, and it's 54-41. Both clubs have great recruits coming in. Kansas got a kid, Sasha Khan, 6'11 kid from out of Russia who's playing down in Florida. Langford. If he ever makes the three-point shot on a consistent basis, he will be almost impossible to defend because of his driving ability. It was just about 28% for three-point land. 
last season. More on Langford of the Kansas program and some of the changes made by new head coach Bill Self when we come back to Lawrence. Come on, we're gonna be late. What are you doing? Getting ready. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the class of 2004. Recently, a MetLife advisor helped these parents create a financial plan so they'll be ready just in case the next 13 years go as fast as the last five. This year, get everything on your wish list. Announcing the Lincoln Mercury wish list year end event with savings on every Lincoln and Mercury, including Lincoln Navigator, the mid sized Lincoln Aviator, and Mercury Mountaineer. Now get a no charge DVD entertainment system plus $2,000 cash back on every Lincoln and Mercury SUV. And see the all new Mercury Monterey, our safest minivan ever, during the wish list year end event. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Introducing a whole new line of over 30 power tools from Rigid that'll seriously outperform what you're using now. With exact line laser precision, batteries that charge in half the time, more torque, and the best warranty in the business. But the attachment that says the most about these tools? The pros who swear by them. Rigid, powerful, durable, professional. Buy them now at the Home Depot. They're as close as two brothers can be. What could possibly come between them? Well, what do we have here? Hey, you guys are stuck together. Hey, don't you walk away from me. Yeah, you better run. From the directors of There's Something About Mary. Oh, oh, oh. You guys are fun. Stuck on you. Hey, what's a four-letter word for snatch? Grab. All oh, right. Right. Oopsie. Rated PG-13, December 12th, only in theaters. Back here at Allen Fieldhouse, a 13-point lead for Kansas with new head coach Bill Self on the bench. And for more on the coach and some of the changes here in the last couple of months, here's Doris Burke. Well, Danny becomes just the eighth head coach in the 106-year history here at Kansas. And some cosmetic changes, most prominently this 25-foot Kansas Jayhawk replacing the old field house floor here at Kansas. There it is right there in a plush new players lounge. Much to the envy of Eric Chenoweth who happens to be in town and then current NBA jerseys of former Jayhawk players which now graces the halls down to the basketball corridor and he talks about the tradition rich program and the fact that that's one of the strongest parts of the program but he is trying to put his own stamp on it guys just some very simple cosmetic things to try to do that. All right, George, thank you very much. And as you say, Bill Self has all the respect in the world for this program and the incredible job that Roy Williams did here the last 15 years. He just wants to tweak it a little bit here or there. Nothing drastic at all. Yeah, you know, the bottom line is every guy has his own little ideas and he wants to have them within the program. The one thing that better not change is the fact that winning. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, our three good administrators have arrived here from the East. Lou Perkins is going to do a phenomenal job like he did in Connecticut and Maryland as the AD. He brought along two outstanding guys in Larry Keating and certainly in Jim Marchione who bring a wealth of administrative experience. I think they were great hands here at Kings. A 13 point lead, each team playing its second game of the season. Each team won its opener. Shannon Brown misses a three, and Miles brings down the rebound, and this time leads his former high school teammate, Lee, a little bit too far. Michigan State's got a good offense out of Shannon Brown and out of Paul Davis. They got to really get those two guys to put some points on the board for them. Down 13, they got to get a little spurt going, and they're capable of doing it. Here's a guy who can score in bunches, making a move on Langford, off to Namick, but he gets it right back. Now here's Brown. Almost got up in the air, kept the toe on the ground. Hager with a step back three, way too strong off the glass. That was Big City USA right there because it was a four shot. Look at Miles just exploiting his quickness advantage. You talk about how no true point guard affects you at the offensive end, but at the defensive end, they don't have anybody with the wheels to slow down Aaron Miles. Aaron Miles really right now, nobody staying between him and the basket, utilizing that great speed with the basketball, and he's become much more assertive offensively. 
Number three on Chris Hill. What Tom Izzo will tell you is when a guy like Marcus Taylor leaves early and surprises you by leaving, not only does it hurt you that he leaves, but because you assumed he would be there, you hadn't yet recruited somebody to replace him. So it's almost like you've lost two players and you don't have anybody waiting to take over the point guard you job. Know, we talk certainly about the LeBron James and the guys that make you Garnett and Bradley, but you mentioned Marcus Taylor. I think of D'Angelo Collins and Lenny Cook, Marcus Hart, Omar Cook. Guys that made such bad, bad decisions thinking they were ready for life for the big leagues and gave up the opportunity. Today, Marcus Taylor could be an absolute superstar on a big team level. Team. And his stock going way, way up. Stock up, baby, instead of stock down. And becoming a basketball vagabond. Hill to the left hand, and a partial block there by Graves. Nobody Lee. back. Simeon. Nobody back. Simeon now runs it up the court. Tom is already very frustrated with their defensive balance. Largest lead of the game right now for the Jayhawks. Simeon with his first two of the second half. He's got 20 on the net. I'm impressed with the makeup of this Kansas team. They have size, they have quickness, they have depth. Davis, another long-range miss, and then a foul committed by Simeon. Roy Williams certainly left that cupboard full, my yeah. friend. You can say what you want. The bottom line is this is a legitimate top-five basketball team. Transition, they're kicking it out. Simeon with the good catch. And there's the finish. Now you talk about the cupboard not being there in Miles, Langford, Simeon, and Graves. Four players with some significant starting experience in this Kansas program. Tell them the great story in New York about Mrs. Simeon. Uh, they're here tonight. Oh, I love that story. We, I saw that. We're, we're doing a, a Kansas game last year in New York, Coaches versus Cancer, right? And we're at Madison yeah. Square Garden, and we're at the Kansas shoot around, and Wayne Simeon's there practicing, and Wayne's parents are there, and his mom, Margaret, there she is in the red. I mean, she, everybody's excited to meet Dickie B, but <laughs> Margaret's off the charts, and she needs a picture. Uh, I don't think Mr. Sip, was he there? That yeah, he was there, too. So, he was there. So they're going to take a group picture of them with Dickie B, and I can't remember who's holding the camera. They're getting ready to take the picture, and Mom, Margaret, says, wait a minute, wait a minute, Dickie B, and she points at me, and she says, your son can come in the picture, too, if you want. <laughs> you're young enough to be my son, yeah. I can tell you that. Right. <laughs> I think she saw the bold yeah. bold man. I guess she saw my bold in your bold. As, as I said to you, Florida, a few days ago, I guess each of us could do worse, right? Yeah. You never know. Oh, he got fouled. Yeah. Big time, but they thought they had a walk prior to the foul. Boy, Davis is having a frustrating night. He's missing outside shots. He's getting clobbered inside, and he's just not holding his own against the Kansas big man. Here it is right now. See a little walk before. There's the contact. Thomas said he has not played to what he expects, and expectations are very high. Played internationally last year in the World Championship games. Well, you talked about all the guys who have left the Michigan State program early in the last few years, and Tom Izzo, for the most part, has not been a part of the decision-making process. He says, I'm going to stay out of the way, but this year, if Paul Davis thinks about going to the NBA, Tom Izzo says he's going to get more involved. And for more on that, let's go to Doris Burke. picture Dan but Tom Izzo said he will certainly get more involved he will have a fist fight at center court if he tries to leave before he's ready and one of the things he said he has to work on Paul Davis is bringing the effort every single night every single practice that consistency has not yet developed guys Bars, he's a very good college basketball player but observing him here tonight he's a long way from being able to battle in the NBA against the likes of Carl Malone and company and Garnett and that gang, he really needs college. Some of these kids don't understand. They need college more than college needs them. And there's his dad, Joe, looking on, and, and Tom Izzo has nothing but praise for the Davis family and what a relationship that he has developed with them. And Izzo's a part of the process, and Paul Davis says he wants Izzo to be a big part of the process. But when you're 6'11", 250, and can shoot the ball from the outside, the NBA scouts are going to come sniffing around. There are 19 NBA scouts at this game tonight, not just for Davis, obviously, but right. um, you'd, you'd like to see, and Tom Izzo would like to see, not just for the Michigan State program, but for Davis's future, that he gets a little more aggressive and a little stronger inside because that's what a guy 6'11", 250 needs to do. And he's a great kid. He's got a great attitude, and he's going to have a heck of a year. He's struggling here early. But the bottom line is there are so many games yet to play, and he's going to be a major factor in the Big Ten. 
He did have 21 points and 8 rebounds in the win over Bucknell. There's Maynard turning it over on the travel. And nothing is going right for Michigan State here in the second half. I'll tell you this, man. If you're thinking about the NBA, you better be getting 21 points and 8 rebounds against Bucknell. <laughs> 20th turnover committed by the Spartans already in this game. They made the point, they tried to negate it, but really, in essence, they're playing without a legit point guard. And today in college basketball, I think it's essential to have a leader, a guy that's an extension of a coach that really understands the role of the point guard. Look at Simeon. Oh, big time. He's big time, my friends. He's big time. Mom and Dad, you can smile. You can smile. And he's a great kid as well. Had a chance to speak to him before the game. Terrific personality. Back from the dislocated shoulder that cost him 22 games last year, including the postseason. And he's got 22 points to play now, one shy of his career high. Ager spins and hits. Ager's the guy that can score big from that way. Can you imagine how good they would have been to have him on the lineup toward the end of the game? Gee whiz, damn, you lose a player like that going down the stretch. I've never heard you say gee whiz before. <laughs> I didn't think you said <laughs> gee whiz. <laughs> There's a lot of things you don't know about me. <laughs> <laughs> Most of which I'm happy not to know. We'll step aside. Tom Izzo's got to get some things sorted out for the gang in green. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Absolutely. He helped me pick this up. This holiday, how can you possibly thank the woman who always believed in you? A key jeweler's three-stone diamond necklace would be a great start. And you can be assured of two things. First, that every K diamond is hand-selected for exceptional beauty. And second, that you'll absolutely love it. Can I give you folks a lift? Every kiss begins with K. The day after Thanksgiving is the day it all begins. It kicks off the holiday season. You gotta start at Walmart. It's this Friday, 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's great stuff. Name brand stuff. Like this HP Pavilion computer with monitor, only $498. The prices are unbelievable. Like Power Wheels ride on Jeeps, just $75.87 each. You, know, you never know what you're going to see. <laughs> like a Quasar VHSC camcorder with color LCD, just $194. It's only at Walmart. You can't get this anywhere else. You better get here early. Well, all Kansas here in the second half, especially a 15-point lead now on Michigan State. Wayne Simeon with a monster first half. A bit of a quiet start to the second half, but now, Dick, again, he's starting to take over. Yeah, Mr. Simeon certainly was a major factor. Shows his ability to run the court here and transition a big guy. Now he shows a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver with a little fadeaway 15-foot jump shot. NBA, nothing but Nara, mom and dad. It's so great when a youngster has their mom and dad supporting them. You heard Nick Collison talking about that tonight yeah. at halftime, about the love for mom and dad. Hey, love it, Christian. Remember we said, I said on Dan Patrick today when I was on Sports Center with him, I don't know anything about them. But you know what? They won again tonight. Who'd they they be? beat Bradley tonight. They beat Rhode Island. Jim Barron, relax now. You don't have to feel so bad. They beat Bradley. John Copeland, he's going to be my coach of the week. This is 25th season. Love it, Christian. Unbelievable. Jerry Fears, get to know that name. At 24 and 8 assists, unbelievable. I learned 25 years about another school that I've never, <laughs> ever heard of. Shock of the week on your website this oh, week? without a doubt. Simeon spins again. Player of the week. And a career high for Wayne Simeon now with 24 points. Player of the week, man, he'll be. He's been oh. unbelievable game against Chattanooga and here. What a battle underneath, and Michigan State just willing the ball into the basket right there. I like Aiden, man. I love his athletic ability. Davis comes up with a loose ball. Anderson pushes it ahead. Shannon Brown alters the shot and banks it home. He is going to be a superstar. We have not seen the real Shannon Brown. That's a demonstration of his athletic ability. He and Ager could put points on the board quickly. They have that ability. She looked at the field goal percentage here in the second half. 41 inch vertical for Brown, who was Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois last year. 
Padgett inside, spinning by Ackerman. We have not seen Padgett get many touches, but there's a little example of him in the post. There's a little example of the vertical by Brown at the other end. Shannon Brown's got stardom all over him. He's a guy to utilize the 94 feet. He's a high riser. He was second in the slam dunk contest, also in the McDonald's, against Mr. LeBron James. And you want to feel old? Shannon Brown will turn 18, 18 on okay. Saturday. He's 17 years old. He's going to be a special player in the Michigan State uniform. Anderson Davis. Where have you been, Paul Davis? Where have you been? His first field goal of the night. A little run here for Michigan State. And now Bill Self wants a timeout. They're not going to go away, man. They reflect the attitude of that leader and that winner, Mr. Izzo. He is an absolute tough competitor. He learned so much from Jack Heathcote, who was a fierce competitor. Now cheering for Gonzaga out there. In That's right. Camp. There's Shannon Brown with that unbelievable hang time on the altered shot. A little bit more of a high percentage shot for Brown there. And then Anderson with a nice look ahead for Davis, who for a big guy runs the floor very well. Nice pass by Anderson. Good catch by Davis. Hey, it's Feast Week all week. A total of 21 games on ESPN and ESPN2. Feast Week presented by eBay continues tomorrow it's a triple header from Maui Villanova taking on Ohio State in the fifth place game at 2 Eastern on ESPN 2 San Diego State against the loser of Hawaii Shamanad at 430 Eastern and then Dayton coached by former Michigan State assistant Brian Gregory taking on the winner in the all Hawaiian semifinal tomorrow night 930 Eastern the championship game on ESPN 2. Simeon getting a little bit of medical attention over on the bench, and that's the last thing any Kansas fan wants to see after the big shoulder injury last year. But whatever it is, it appears to be mine as he's shrugging it off. Look at Bill Self. He think about being fiery. Look at him right there. That's why he was a winner at Tulsa. That's why he was a winner at Illinois. That's why they were really upset when he left Illinois. I told him, man, if they weren't upset, that means you didn't do a good job. It means they loved you. Michigan State forces another turnover. What a rapid rise by Bill Sell from assistant to Oral Roberts to Tulsa to Illinois to Kansas in the span really of 11 years from when he was an assistant had never had a head coaching job now to being the head coach in one of the marquee programs in America. You know, whenever they're upset and you leave like Roy Williams leaving here, obviously people are upset. That means they loved you. That means they cared about you. I will never forget Alex Rodriguez called me up once before he was going to play in Seattle. I said, I'm going to get booed. I said, man, if they don't do it, look at Hey, Rashid Johnson, a Juco player, a senior, his second year in the Michigan State program. He is a point guard, and now Tom Izzo is going to get him a look here in the second half. Well, he had an injury last year. He's very strong, physical with the ball. But I remember Alex asking me, he says, what do I do when they boo me up in Seattle? I said, Alex, if they don't boo you, that means they never loved you. Yeah. They loved you, man. The same with Roy and Bill Self, as you watch Johnson now. He says, coach, you should be playing me, coach. You should be giving me some PT, coach. Now they've tried Anderson and Hill. And we mentioned Brandon Cotton's got a stress fracture. The freshman who is a point guard is going to be out a month. So now Tom Izzo turns to Rasheed Johnson. And Johnson, the most recent part of a nice 10 to 2 run by the Spartans that have gotten them back into the game. And now they have forced yet another turnover. They are really going on a real tough spurt here, typical of a Tom Izzo claw. Not backing down at all. They're on a tough environment. Tough to play here. But he lost once here last year to Arizona. Here comes those black short. Jayhawk faithful. Davis inside gets Padgett in the air and draws the foul. A much stronger move by Davis. And Padgett has picked up his fourth. Graves already has four for Kansas. They really in that situation here. They went inside, brought the ball to the low box, but the big thing there is Padgett gets number four. Davis wanted the ball. He wanted the basketball. Now you got to convert on that free throw line. They become big as you come down the stretch here, down on the road. Davis knocks it down, and here come two other big guys, Simeon and Graves, back into the game. Hatchet will go out along with Nash, so Kansas gets bigger. One guy goes out with four fouls and Padgett, but another one comes in and graves. They not only get bigger, but they get really a lot of experience coming back. Yeah. Winning experience. Yeah. With graves with 16 points and 16 rebounds in the final game against Syracuse in the uh, NCAA championship battle. Remember last year, he came in 
to the season for a variety of reasons. About 30 pounds overweight was really not a part of the team at the beginning of preseason. Had to earn his way onto the team by losing weight and, and running a certain number of laps and a certain number of minutes. Is another turnover. But Graves has a ton of ability and he's a tremendously important player for Kansas again this year. Great play by Davis defensively. Good post defense. Graves average on nine rebounds a game. You're right, Dan. He was a valuable player, especially when Simeon got hurt. Graves knocking it out of bounds. Michigan State's on a 12-2 run right now. For those of you tuning in near the top of the hour for Sports Center here on ESPN, it will come your way immediately following the conclusion of this game. This is a biggie, an early big game in college basketball. And Michigan State right now has roared back into it on a 12-2 run. Go to Davis inside. He wanted the basketball. Got it inside. Called by Jim Burr as Rasheed Johnson. See, he's telling him. He's telling him right there. Says, coach, coach, I understand. Dump the ball to the low box. The kid wanted it. Davis starting to become a little more assertive inside. Aaron Miles, the leader, the junior point guard who has started 75 games in his Kansas career, trying to get a little calm back into the game here. Langford sneaking inside again, and the tap is good by Simeon. Simeon and Gray just hanging on their bodies in a great offensive rebound position after the drive by Langford. Four perimeter players and Davis on the floor for Michigan State. And now a reach-in foul is going to be called on Aaron Miles. Michigan State, when they get into the Breslin Center with the Zones, that'll be a special environment. And as you said, what a schedule. And they expect about 75,000 people at Ford Field when they play Kentucky. I mean, that's going to be amazing. Last year, they beat Kentucky at Kentucky. Tim Bogracus, a guy you wouldn't expect, knocks down a trifecta. He was like their seventh option. <laughs> <laughs> a former walk-on. And Tom Izzo, I mean, I don't know. You tell me as a former coach, is there such a thing? There's too much depth at certain positions, but they've got so many two guards or wing players, however you want to say it. They're going to find a way for Keep minutes it happening. for all of them. Well, they're, they're getting back into the game, so Coach Izzo a little bit happier right now, but their biggest problem continues to be how do they stop Wayne City and the big guys having a career night? And we are back at Allen Fieldhouse, where Dick's admiring his $4 haircut and my $6 <laughs> haircut. It's Feast Week, presented by eBay on ESPN and ESPN2. Michigan State's gotten back into this game. Now, you're in the huddle over there with the guys in green. What are you telling them? Well, you got to tell them right now, I want to get some touches inside to Davis. He wants the basketball inside. You know, now that I look at you, now I can understand why Mrs. Simeon thought that you were my son. <laughs> look at those two domes. Look at those domes. Are you kidding me? Very similar, man. Between you There's, and me, we might have three strands here. There is no dignity working with this man, but there sure is a whole lot of fun. <laughs> but I would get the ball inside, really, to dance. Yes. Yeah, that's a dope. We could look like that guy. We're not, we're not so bad compared to that guy. You know, it was quite a sight getting here for the for the, the practices today and seeing students sleeping in the hallway, waiting not for tickets, they had tickets, just for a seating order, a priority to get into the building and get the best seats to see this very entertaining game here tonight. Look at uh, the comparison to the guys, Davis, a sophomore, Paget. A freshman, these two big guys in the middle, and you say they got to keep pounding the ball into Davis right now, but he's getting a little more assertive. Yeah, he's getting a little more assertive inside. He's one for eight right now. Certainly nine points, and then we'll go to the foul line. I'm going to change the look here to coming out of the man and playing zone, straight zone. Let's go to Doris Burke. Doris? Well, obviously, Kansas Huddle was very upset. He really got after Aaron Miles. He told him, listen, get your head in the game. When I call a play, you run that. He also said we've screwed up this game because we haven't gotten back in transition. He said let's play the post straight up. Miles wants to give help and he also wants to take advantage of Allen Anderson guarding in the post. So they want to go inside as well. Allen Anderson again started the game as the point guard but when they go small and bring in somebody else to play the point Anderson moves all the way to power forward so it's 6 6 2 20 at times he's having to guard somebody like Wayne Simeon exactly they become very small with Davis their only big player and they become very athletic though and quick and the bottom line is other people have to match up with you though yeah. with the quickness as well we're seeing that across America I'm telling you we've all seen that in Arizona Mike Krzyzewski out Duke, who, by the way, just tied John Wooden. Congratulations to Michael Kay. 
And Lou Olson just picked up his 500th win at Arizona, right? Yep, Hall of Famer. Yep. And we've got Arizona and Florida in the Hall of Fame game, the Mass Mutual Classic, Friday night. What a game that's going to be. Sports Center is next here on ESPN, immediately following the conclusion of this game. Anderson misses the long jumper. Davis with the offensive rebound, and Miles has yet another steal. He has great hands. He has great anticipation ability. Just picked up the loose ball off the fumble by Lee, but then is called for the offensive foul. Number two on Aaron Miles. Excellent throw by Jim Burns. Out of control right there when he picked up the loose ball. We're going to watch him right now. Good job defensively. Beat him to the baseline. Beat that defense, offensive player to the baseline, established position, draw the contact. Chris Hill returns from Michigan State. Rasheed Johnson comes out and gets a lecture from Tom Izzo. Hill is the best shooter that Michigan State has, one of the best shooters in the Big Ten, maybe in the country. He's got seven points in tonight's game. They just got to get him some looks, lay some screens for him. Trying to run a double screen at Hill there. Hill playing with four fouls as Miles forces another turnover. What a job he's done at the defensive end. And what a stat line he has. You go to that line, unbelievable, 16 points. We're going to watch him right here. Always hustling, diving for the loose ball, forced the turnover. Still a guy who gets virtually no national recognition because he's not a big-time scorer, but he does everything else well that you need a point guard to do, and he's scoring more than that. There's so many great point guards. That's why you're talking about Thomas and Notre Dame, Jameer Nelson, D. Brown, yeah. Raymond Felton. Well, and if you're Miles, your first two years, you played with guys like Drew Gooden and Nick Collison and Kirk Hunter. There are a lot of good guys, a lot of good options. This kid is unbelievable. There is not a better driver in America. I'll tell you, Doris Burke, there is not a better driver in America with the rock in his hands on the win. He is an absolute dynamite slasher. You're going to take him a look here at triple threat position. Let me tell you, I picked my first five All-American teams at the guard spot or the small forward, and I made a major error not having this kid on there. This kid is so talented and so explosive as a scorer. All of a sudden, the Kansas lead is back into double figures thanks to Langford. He's now got nine points tonight, all of them here in the second half. And whenever you need that big basket, he's a go-to kind of guy. You gotta have that kind of guy. They got one on the wing and they got one inside. I think that combo is as good as any one-two punch in America when you talk Langford and Simeon. Hager for three, and Michigan State badly needed that one. Big time scorer, showed it in the NCAA tournament. He just has to stay healthy. Reese Hager, Shannon Brown. And they defend down to this end where Anderson is trying to get a body on Simeon, and nobody puts a body on Langford. Can't play it, Dan. He's so explosive. There's no one in America that can drive to the basket and score in a variety of ways like Keith Langford. And as you say, if he can ever improve the outside shot, he'll be completely unstoppable. Yeah, impossible to defend. 11 second half points for Langford. Because right now you can play off him. Davis calling for the ball inside. Anderson couldn't get it to him. It's amazing. You play off him, and he still beat you yeah. to the basket with that first step. Graves with four fouls defending Davis. Anderson knocks down the line drive jumper, and the lead is down to nine. Seems like Anderson and Hill have been there for about 10 years. Oh, no. <laughs> it seems like they've been there forever. 16 now for Anderson. He's the high scorer in the game for the Spartans. Wayne Simeon leads all scores in the game with a career high 28. See, they understand who to get the ball to. Right now, you need to stop. Lee's three won't stay down. Graves, no. Simeon, no. And the Spartans come up with it. But standing out of bounds when he catches the ball is Anderson. Bad break for the Spartans. Yeah, really bad break because they got a really good opportunity there. The right guy, as far as the Spartans were concerned, shooting the ball, Lee. They'd rather see Lee shoot it than Langford and Simeon trying to score. Shannon Brown has come out. Tim Bagrakis has come into the game for Michigan State. It's Kansas ball. They're up by nine, approaching the five-minute mark. Bagrakis picks up toughness. Good defensive player. You know, he was a walk-on until Marcus Taylor left early, and then Bagrakis, maybe the only guy who benefited from Taylor leaving because he got a scholarship. He got a scholarship and made that big three. Always, yeah. always remember against Kentucky on the road. 
Nobody's on Lee, but he misses the floater, and Davis brings down the rebound. That's the one point. If I was Tommy's, I'd be really disappointed with. They're not rotating or they're giving help to one another. Hager with a wide open look. He's now got 17 in the game, and Michigan State all of a sudden is back within six. At least Hager has to play. They got to find minutes to that guy because he's going to score, man. There's a look at the three-point shooting right now, 5 for 12. Sparks heating up in the second half, but they can't stop Langford. Why doesn't somebody rotate over and give some help? Usually in their defensive scheme, they get help. Love Keith Langford. Tony and up there, love that guy. He's a big-time scorer, a prolific scorer. Hill inside the Davis. Banks it home, and the lead down to six again. That's the real Paul Davis. Bring the ball into the box door. He wants it now. We talk about some go-to scores. Simeon and Langford have been that here tonight, as you said. Maybe the best two-man combo in America. As scorers, they really are. I'm going to tell you something. If you're a Spartan fan, you have to be happy the way this club has battled there to make this a game because it looked like it looked like they were going to be knocked out. Yep. Again, foul trouble for the big guys and inexperience for some of the big guys, so they're playing small. Hill to the rebound. Look ahead for Ager, a low percentage pass. Even if he catches it, it's one against two, and Tom Izzo slammed his fist into the scorer's table in disgust. Yeah, he should be. That's a bad decision right there for an experienced player. This is a very experienced player. Should know better. He's a very bright guy with a good basketball IQ. Timeout, Kansas. Can't turn the ball over like that when you're down six with three minutes left. Well, Michigan State had forced Kansas into a miss, and after the turnover, Tom Izzo Ooh. just cannot take Ooh, it anymore. Watch out. Don't break that hand, Tommy Izzo. Don't break that hand. Now there's more opportunity to see some great college hoop action as Feast Week presented by eBay continues all this week on ESPN and ESPN2. It's the semifinals at the preseason NIT from New York City. Utah and Texas Tech in the first game on ESPN2 at 7. And then Georgia Tech taking on number one Connecticut here on ESPN at 9.30. Number two Duke on our networks from up in Alaska. Arizona, Florida coming up Friday. Four and five Michigan State, Kansas here tonight. What a week it is. Take a look right here. Nobody rotates over. Nobody comes over to the baseline. He gets an open entree. What a one maneuver. You can see that on a playground, but man, you can't see it in a team concept. Team concept. Tom is too good of a teacher of the man to man principles for that to be happening. Open lanes to the basket. Under three minutes to play. Kansas with the ball and a six point lead. Shot clock at five. Langford driving on Bogracus, a tough defender. The follow no good, and the Spartans come down with it. Bogracus did a great job defensively in that sequence. First of all, he tried to keep the ball out of the hands of Langford, and then he played it very physical. That's why he's in the game right now. Now can they capitalize with a make at the other end? Hill with a drive, and a follow by Davis to bring it the lead down to four. Where was Mr. Davis for 30 minutes in his game? He's a different player. His dad says, that's my son. That's the guy that was a high school All-American, rated very high by Bob Gibbons. 11 second half points for Davis, 13 in the game. And this is as close as the Spartans have been in a long, long time. I love the fight in those Spartan kids. They're not backing down. Again, we talk about personalities. They reflect their coach. Michael Lee, fadeaway jumper way off. But the follow is good for J.R. Giddens. There's those legs, man. He's got great hops. He can high rise with the best of all the diaper down to Giddens. Giddens now with 80. He had two spectacular dunks in the first half, but I know you're going to see on Sports Center tonight. A travel on Davis. He shuffled his feet, says Jim Burr, and his dad cannot bear to watch. It was an excellent call. He definitely lifted the pivot foot. An excellent call by Jimmy Burr. He took the extra step after he had established post position. Tom Izzo saying he got bumped. That's why he shuffled his feet. Jim Burr says no. 137 to go. Kansas by six. Michigan State roaring right back into the game. The follow jam by Davis, but it's Kiddins with the offensive rebound and slam at the other end. Hey. Why does he know she gotta move so fast? Love is pop with
XM Satellite Radio. Point, Carol. 100 digital channels you'll never want to be without. With music, news, sports, and talk, many commercial free, it's the perfect holiday gift. XM Satellite Radio. This is titanium. One of the sharpest metals known to man. Now available in a somewhat more manageable size. The new Remington Titanium Series. The world's only shaver with the sharpness of titanium coated trimmer blades for a shave that's incredibly close and comfortable. Remington Titanium. It could just make all other shavers obsolete. Meanwhile, at home... Hey, beat it, squirt. So, you want something to drink? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll, I'll go get that. <laughs> okay. You're cheating hard. It'll make you Where's Kelly? She had to go. Linksys wireless media adapters share photos and music from PC to TV. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. Now you've seen all night long the intensity on the faces of the coaches and the, the effort on the floor from both of these teams. Tom Izzo told us earlier today he doesn't know if this unbelievably tough schedule is the right thing to do. They've got so many questions, not that many answers right now. What have you learned about this team today? Well, I've learned right now that he's still searching to find out who should be playing. And he has to determine that rotation and get the right people on the floor. And when they do, they're going to be a dynamite basketball team. I think today most clubs would have folded here when they got down double figures with this crowd, the great environment. Environment, the tough Kansas team, but his club responded and battled back and came back strong as you look at him shooting threes. I'll tell you, it's just finding an identity. You learn that in games like this. You yep. don't learn it when you beat people by 30 and 40 and pounded a bunch of cupcakes. And they'll learn a whole lot more next week. You and I will have them Wednesday night at East Lansing at the Breslin Center for the ACC Big Ten Challenge against Duke. And we'll have them Saturday afternoon on ESPN as well against Oklahoma at the Palace at Auburn Hills. Yeah, you know, the his zones will certainly give them a great, great advantage there. And with Duke, it'll be a great matchup. Mike Krzyzewski and his great young kids. J.J. Reddick should have a phenomenal year this year for them. Miles in control with the basketball. Boy, it helps to have an experienced leader with the point. Got to be able to make free throws down the stretch also. Something Kansas has done well tonight and did well against Chattanooga in their first win. Shot clock is down to five. I think in two previous possessions, though, the Lord people shot the basketball. Miles, the tip by Padgett. No, and the Spartans come down with it as we go under a minute. And score live right here. Timeout, Michigan State. Look at the emotion on the coach. It may be only November, but he's coaching like it's March right now. And that becomes contagious to all your players. It really does. When they feel the passion of their leader, there's nothing like having people that have passion of what they're doing. A great triple header for you tomorrow is Feast Week presented by eBay. Continues on ESPN and ESPN2. And all the games come from the beautiful island of Maui. Villanova taking on Ohio State in the fifth place game of that tournament at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. San Diego State against the Hawaii Chaminade loser in a semifinal going on tonight. And then the championship game, the Dayton Flyers taking on the winner of the Hawaii Chaminade game tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, how has Michigan State gotten back into this game in the second half after trailing by as many as 17? Rasheed Johnson, who would hardly play, comes off the bench. A tough left-handed layup. And then Maurice Ager has really had a big second half. He's got 17 points in the game. Chris Hill with the miss. Paul Davis with the slam. He's got 11 points in the second half. Ager and Davis certainly asserted himself. As you take a look there, 78, 72, Kansas. Winning by six. Sports Center after the game here on ESPN. Davis no. And the rebound for Lee in traffic. Great rebound. Showed his athletic ability. The former quarterback. He gives it to the quarterback and winner, Mr. Miles. Got a foul now, though, don't you, Dick? Or do yeah. you play? There's only a 15 second difference, and you're already down six. He's got to come after him, put him on a free throw line. Yeah. Taking a lot of time off that clock. 
Almost forced a turnover. Almost again forced a turnover. Tom Izzo screaming, foul him, foul him. And finally, Anderson will put Miles on the line. Lena, he's upset. He's very frustrated. I'm out too much time off that clock. Managing the clock at the end. So essential to winning. Tomorrow I'll be talking about this game with Tim Stout. Buddy of mine, radio guy out of East Lansing. Look at this. They're taking time off. We have radio out there about 1.30 in East Lansing while you're flying home to Canada. <laughs> Miles at the line. A 75% free throw shooter a year ago. And Kansas tonight, Dick. 21 of 25 from the free throw line. Well, you know, a guy like Miles, very important that he can make free throws, especially down the stretch of the game, because the rock's going to be in his hand so often. Shot 75% last year. Tom is those kids, man, and made this one heck of a fight. When I thought, to be honest with you, I thought they're going to be blown away in that one sequence when they went down by as many as I believe 13. 17 at one point. Was it 17? Yeah, it was 58 41 at one point for Kansas. Michigan State got it back within four, and the play that Tom Izzo may think about more than any other was Hill, that long pass into traffic. They were down six at the time, and they gave away a possession. Also, the walk inside yeah. by Davis yeah. down the low post leak in the game. Again, it's been a good battle. Two clubs we're going to hear a lot about during the course of the season. Both are going to be really forces in their respective conference. The Big 12 will be dynamite again. You watch that NIT tomorrow, people. You'll see Rick Majerus and Bobby Knight hooking up. You watch Andre Emmett, Andrew Bogut. Then you see Mr. Okafer and Gordon as a 1 2 tandem against outstanding perimeter players. Yep. Jerry Jack and that gang. They could score B.J. Elder down there for Georgia Tech. Well, and that brings up the point. You talked about Langford and Simeon. If, you, if you're talking about one-two punches, you got to talk about Okafor and oh, Gordon no, in the that, same breath. Oh, yeah. that's a great combination. Yeah. And you got to love when you talk about combinations down in North Carolina. But Gans and Felton's a dynamite yeah. duo. Bay's got great soft hands as well. And Duke, you got to love their perimeter thrill. When you talk about the trio they have with Duhon and Ewing. And Anxious to see the Wall Dane play next week when they get up to uh, the Breslin Center. He's for real. Yeah. Hager gets loose for a three from the corner. And short of Rock Chalk Jayhawk here at Allen Fieldhouse. The Kansas Jayhawks get this in the last nine years are 122 and six in this building. I think the number that amazes me. Over 15 years that Roy Williams was at the helm here, that he averaged 28 wins a year. When you think about all those 30 game seasons, I also what really touches me when I think about the Roy Williams era are all the quality young men that wore that uniform and respected what he believed in and taught, and they walked down the aisle and received their diploma as yep. well. I mean, the guy's a Hall of Fame, no doubt about it. I've said once, and I'll say it again, if Bob Frederick was still here as the athletic director, I wrote it in my book, and I believe it, Roy Williams would still be here. But if they had to make a choice, they made the right choice yep. in Bill Self. Jeff Hawkins into the game as Michael Lee comes out. It's all but over now for the Michigan State Spartans, despite a great effort coming back into this game in the second half. You know what I respected about Bill Self? He wasn't afraid of the challenge as you watch the layup there in the timeout. The challenge of replacing a guy like Roy Williams. A lot of people fear a failure, wouldn't want that opportunity. But he said, you know what? I'm confident of my ability, and I really believe that's what my wife, my family want to be. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to attack it head on. My friends, he has stepped right in and has taken over. Under 10 seconds to go. Such wonderful tradition here at Lawrence and the Bill Self's team trying to keep it going. Back here with Lawrence at nine point. Oh, you want to talk about some Gonzalez. superstars? I want to go get his hey, hey, The guy on the left could swing the bat a little bit. Oh, not bad. George Brett. Not bad. Hall of Fame. I lost his brother recently. Yes, just Jack last Brad. week. Yeah. Really sad to hear that. But Tony Gonzalez, what a tight end. He was a good basketball player. I did a game that he played for California. What a combination those two guys. Two Jayhawk fans. 
George Brett, you talk about swinging the lumber, man. He was in one of the best ever. Yeah, I'm gonna run and get some autographs. I'll see you, Dan. <laughs> okay. I'll be back. I'm gonna get some pictures, some autographs. I'm a groupie, man. I want to be a groupie. Well, it's been a special night. You should go find Nick Collison. He had his uniform retired tonight at halftime, joining the likes of, of Danny Manning and more recently Paul Pierce, Drew Good and Rafe with friends and others from, from James Naismith to Fog Allen to Larry Brown to Roy Williams. And now Bill Self is 2 0 as head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. A hard fought seven point win over Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans. Both of these teams will be heard from over the course of this season. The final score from Allen Fieldhouse Kansas City 1, Michigan State 74. Sports Center coming up next year on ESPN. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Jayhawks win. For Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and our entire crew, I'm Dan Schulman, saying so long from Lawrence. This is SportsCenter. Ken O'Neill and company continue to set the pace atop the NBA. Baron Davis and the Hornets look to sting the heat. And we ask you, who is this year's beast of the East? Day two of the Schilling soap opera has he drawn the curtains on Arizona while the champs unhook a big fish. A coaching rivalry renewed. An interstate battle with Oklahoma up for grabs. Can the lightning strike back against the Rangers? And how a Thanksgiving tradition will affect this year's NFL playoffs. Sports Center, right up your alley, right now.